Welcome to Mr. J's uh, SES for you Earth and Space Science video tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look at a cooling history for a liquid composed of just magnesium and iron rich, or magnesium component and iron component of olivine mixed uh, together in some uh, specified proportion. Okay, so uh, just to recap from the last time we were together, we looked at the uh, what these different curves are uh, in the diagram. We called that the solid, sorry, the liquid composition curve, and the one below is the solid composition curve. And these curves define crystals that are in equilibrium with liquids uh, at the same temperature. So um, we reviewed that this is a binary composition axis, so we can get both the magnesium and the iron component uh, off of the diagram. Okay, so uh, what I'd like to do is uh, illustrate for you the mechanics of working through a crystallization history for some specified composition. And the composition that uh, I would like to use is, uh, well, let's just take a 50% Okay, I've got a problem there. I just need to add another layer. And you can't see this, it's off of the video. There we go. Okay, so uh, I'd like to use uh, a composition that's 50%, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50% iron and 10, 20, 30, 40, 50% magnesium. So the line that I'm going to draw a vertical line through the diagram through that point. And that's going to represent the composition of the system, that blue line. I'm going to abbreviate that, that to COMP, composition of the system. And that means that both the olivine and the liquid uh, combine to always give this composition. Okay. So uh, rem let's just recall that uh, this is the liquid field. And I'm just going to give myself a little space. I'm going to bring this in with an arrow. That this is the liquid plus solid field. And then this is the solid field. So we're going to start at a very high temperature, somewhere above 1900 degrees. So I'm going to use uh, yellow horizontal lines to represent where we are temperature-wise. Okay, so at this temperature, I'm going to call that T1, the system is 100% liquid. There are no crystals at all. As we cool uh, the, the uh, system, at this point right here, something special happens at this temperature. Right here. Crystals will form. So we'll have a liquid that is basically still the composition of the system and the first tiny little crystals will form. And they're going to have a composition that is very magnesium rich. So they're going to be very, very rich in magnesium. Uh, we only have 10 or 12, we have about 12% iron in those crystals and 88% uh, magnesium. And as we cool this uh, system a little bit more, the liquids are going to change composition to become more and more magnesium rich. And I'm just going to use a magenta to show the that the we're going to be, liquids are going to move down the liquid composition curve in this direction and the crystal compositions are going to move down in this direction. And I just want to identify how far that this can go. How well we can go right to here until we have just crystals and almost no liquid left at this temperature. So this, if we, as we cool the system, the liquids are going to evolve in composition all the way over to this point right here. 
So I'm going to put a dot there. And the solids are going to evolve over towards the composition of the system. The system as a whole. So once we reach this temperature, and I'm going to call that, uh, for now, I'm going to call this T3. Well, I'm going to call it T4, actually, because we're going to see in another video, I'm going to need T3. So I'm always going to use uh, T4 is the temperature at which the last little bit of liquid crystallizes to give uh, the final uh, solid composition, crystal composition, that is the composition of the system as a whole. Okay, so at this temperature, after T4, any temperature cooler, and we will get uh, we'll just have solids that are cooling, 100% crystalline material. And that makes sense. We started with this composition of liquid, and when we're all done, if we don't allow any material to move in or out of the system, then we will uh, have the exact same composition as solid. Okay, so let's just uh, finish this up a little bit and get some of these compositions, and we can uh, read them. So I'm just going to drop a vertical line right here. So let's go back to this temperature. I'm going to call this T2. At this second temperature, uh, we have just a little bit less than 100% liquid. And we have some small amount of solids. Well, the composition of the liquid is the composition of the system pretty well. So we have this liquid is, oh, let's do it this way, Mg 50 Fe 50. That's the liquid composition right here. The solid composition we said was Mg 88, 88% magnesium, and 12% iron. Sorry for squishing that in. When we finish cooling at T4, we're going to have some small amount of liquid, so just a little bit of liquid, and almost 100% solid. And the composition of the solids will be the composition of the system overall, or very, very close to it. So we'll write Mg50 Fe 50. 50% 50 of each. Sorry, that's the solids. So I better make that clear. That's the solid composition. We're almost in the solid field. Any, any temperature below this temperature right here, we're in the solids. Okay, and the liquid, and this is quite spectacular, has evolved to very rich iron compositions. So we're at about 88% uh, iron, or 12% magnesium. So we're at Mg12, 12, and the iron component is now way up at uh, 88. And it's just coincidental that uh, these numbers uh, seem to be related. Uh, we could have you know, very, very different numbers. It's just the nature of uh, the way this particular problem worked out that uh, there's a symmetry in these numbers. So don't be uh, tricked by that. It doesn't always work out that way. Okay, well, that's uh, we're going to build up this a little bit more in the next video tutorial. But we've just looked at uh, what happens to crystal compositions and liquid compositions in a binary system as we cool from 100% liquid all the way down to 100% solid. Okay, we'll see you next time.